The year is 2014. Cal calm down, it's a framing device. Jesus. After nearly eight years of network TV success, the detective comedy show Psych concludes with its 120th episode. By all definitions of the word, it was a hit. Giving its creator, Steve Franks, quite a bit of clout in the entertainment industry. He'd seen minor success in the past, helping pen the screenplay for Big Daddy in 1999, but it was Psych that got his name in good with the big players of the small screen. What I'm saying is, when Franks came out with a pitch for a new show months after his big hit ended, executives listened. Specifically, executives over at Fox, who were looking to corner the market on TV comedy. So, what was Steve Franks' next big project? If you've watched my Make Believe video, you'll know that the production of the album was a bit rocky. To summarize, Rivers Cuomo grew dissatisfied with his quote, life of ego and vice, and was looking for a big change. This change came in the form of a book given to him by friend and producer Rick Rubin, which inspired him to redefine how he lived his life. Eventually, this led to him selling all his possessions and returning to Harvard where he had studied as a young man in the mid-90s. Now 34, Rivers was intent on living the life of a normal college student. He lived in a 14 by 9 foot dorm, slept in a standard issue bed, studied at a standard issue desk, and ate the standard issue food at his dorm's dining hall. His favorite of which was chickpeas, by the way. The only adjustment Cuomo made to his room was a taped up world map and a $200 oriental rug. Now, $200 may sound like a lot for a rug, but it's pennies when you consider Cuomo was worth somewhere around $10 million at the time. So to summarize, a multi-millionaire, 30-something rock star decided to give it all up to live the life of an average college student. And this change seemed to have paid off. Sure, for obvious reasons, Make Believe didn't come out as good as it could have, but any fan can tell you that after Rivers graduated in 2006, he was a much more confident and satisfied artist. He was also a married artist, but the internet is conflicted on how related these two things are. So you get where I'm going with this. At some point, Steve Franks heard the story of a rock star taking a break from the spotlight to study at college and got a light bulb over his head. <laughs> I got glass in my face! He gave Cuomo a call, who of course said yes, because this was the same year as the second Weezer cruise. The man was down for anything. And then, Franks pitched the show as a comedy to Fox in 2014 under the name Modern Deuce, which eventually, for legal reasons, was changed to Detour. Fox then gave Franks a put pilot commitment. Now, you're probably wondering, wait, there was a second Weezer cruise? And yes, it's ridiculous, but pay attention. A put pilot commitment means that the network has agreed to air the pilot, but does not guarantee that the project will go to series. So instead of immediately ordering 13 episodes, which is also pretty common, they gave Franks the go-ahead to film a pilot which they have to air, at which point they will decide if more episodes will be produced. The thing is, Detour never aired. Rivers Cuomo told Billboard that the pilot was finished, completely finished, but Fox passed on it before it ever aired. This means Fox chose to pay a penalty to the studios that made the pilot over airing it. The pilot, however, does have an IMDb page where they call it a TV movie, which makes sense as oftentimes that's what they call these failed pilots when they air without a series attached. Regardless, research on this pilot was very frustrating. In that same Billboard article, they mention how they got a hold of the screenplay for the pilot episode, like it's this unique thing that their very prestigious organization has exclusivity to. So prestigious and unique, in fact, that they couldn't possibly link us peasants to screenplay, even those of us making video essays on it. But oh ho ho, you fuckers. You really thought I wouldn't find this script? I googled, Detour Pilot, Detour Pilot 2014, Detour Fox, Detour Screenplay, Detour 2014 Screenplay, Detour Fox Screenplay, and Detour Fox Script, until that last one led to a Google site called TV Writing, which archives scripts from TV shows for educational purposes. And one of the hundreds of scripts they archived was Detour. Fuck you, Billboard, and fuck you, Fox. Okay, to be fair, there actually are a lot of copyright disclaimers on the script itself, implying that leaking the script would get you severe legal repercussions. This is absolutely why the website where I found it kept repeating the educational and non-profit nature of what it was doing, and why Billboard had to summarize and review the script. But fuck Billboard anyway. For the longest time, my plan was to upload a full reading of the script, animated in the style of Internet Historian, but I don't know how protected from Fox I'd be. Basically, what I'm saying is, I'm linking the website where I found the script in the description, and if you, for whatever reason, would want to completely independently use Control f to type Detour, you could, in theory, find the script for yourself and read it. And if I ever feel confident enough to make a 40 minute long reading of the script with some buddies, I'll make sure to link that as well. For now, here's a plot summary. 
Michael Sturgis is a 32-year-old musician portrayed by relative unknown Ben Aldridge, who, after suffering years of harsh critique for his music and a full year of writer's block, decides to go to Tate University in the hopes of developing himself as a person. There, he meets such wacky characters as the totalitarian Professor Zaring, played by Peter Gallagher of American Beauty and The O.C., the kiss-ass T.A. Gabrielle de la Cruz, played by Olivia Thurlby or Anderson from Dread, the meathead Jock Jonah, portrayed accurately, I'm sure, by Michael Reap, who played Frat Dude in that Shane Dawson movie, the bouncy R.A. Annika, performed by Alice Lee, who also played the transphobic bully in Sierra Burgess as a loser, the genius Walter, You're the smartest guy I ever met. You're too stupid to see. We have an imposter among us. Played by Joey Morgan, who was also Augie in Scout's Guide to the Zombie Apocalypse. On top of this, Michael is also pestered by his perpetually panicked manager Dominic, who is portrayed by Affion Crockett, who has just kind of been in everything. As well as Michael's well-intentioned but creepy stalker Lily, who seemed to have been created with the purpose of serving a pretty major role in the show, yet remains creditless on IMDb. And who could forget Myrna Garcia as girl student? Oh, also Rivers himself was supposed to cameo, as Professor Kitts, but I don't know how minor or major the character would have been, as he wasn't in the pilot. But beyond just a cameo, Rivers actually served as executive producer on the show, which should help answer the question I'm sure many of you are wondering, how biographical was this semi-biographical show? Well, it's clear the minds behind the series were Weezer fans. With both the character Michael and the person Rivers having hippie parents, implied absent father, alternative rock bands, leaked demos, terrible critical responses in the years leading up to a college return, severe writer's block, and this is really superficial but I gotta say it, Asian love interests. And that's just what's introduced in the first episode. This pilot really works not only for fans of Weezer, but for fans of television. I shit you not, I read the first few pages of the script, and although it's a little basic, this pilot is enjoyable. I especially like Michael as this absolutely detached idiot who thinks he's really charismatic but is constantly put down by everyone around him. And Dominic, who according to the script gets down on his knees and begs crying for Michael not to go to college. The show had potential, and anybody who's ever watched a show knows that the pilot is always one of the worst episodes. They have to dedicate a lot of time to character introductions rather than having an interesting story, and I think compared to a lot of pilots I've watched, this one does a fairly good job at doing both. Sad to see it was flushed away so carelessly. Fun fact, IMDb calls Jonah Jonas, which means at some point in development Jonah was supposed to be named after the character from the Blue Album. The script has Jonah, so I don't know who fucking cares, I had nowhere else to put this. And that's it. That's everything there is to know about Detour. It really genuinely could have been good, but we'll never know. Rivers told Press, It's weird. In music, if you make an album and your label decides not to put it out, you can bring it to another label, and sometimes it can be a big success. At least it gets out. In TV, I've learned it's not like that. The pilot was made, completely finished, and we can't show it to anybody. No one will ever see it. It's a huge waste of money. Waste of money or not, Fox has left the project dormant ever since. Instead, 2015's fall season premiered three other live-action comedies, those being Grandfathered starring John Stamos and Josh Peck, as well as The Grinder starring Rob Lowe and Fred Savage, which you can clearly see were both picked up for their big stars. But then there's Cooper Barrett's Guide to Surviving Life, which was a college comedy that got chosen over Detour despite having no big names in the cast or behind the scenes. I guess it was probably chosen because it had a younger cast. Doesn't matter much, anyway, as all of these shows got cancelled after their first season. Yes, all of them. Even Grandfathered, which did well in the ratings and in viewership. Hell, even that year's Family Guy ripoff couldn't get past its first season. Seems like fall 2015 may have just been a bad year to premiere on Fox. Or maybe they shouldn't have tried to premiere it on Fox at all. Why? Well, do me a favor. Think of your favorite Fox comedy. Futurama. Cancelled, sold to Comedy Central. American Dad. Cancelled, sold to TBS. Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Cancelled, sold to NBC. Arrested Development. Three seasons and 14 Emmy nominations. Cancelled and sold to Netflix. Family Guy. Cancelled twice. Brought back due to DVD sales. The Simpsons. Perpetual Hell. Now also on Disney+. Plus. And those are just the ones that lived on somehow. The Last Man on Earth ended with a cliffhanger, and the vast majority of others barely got a season. Fox loves its comedies, but only as long as they are financially viable. The absolute moments they stop being so, they're gone. And if they never stop being viable, then they never end. 
Is that what you would have wanted from Detour? For it to have gone on for too long or just one season? Yeah, me neither. Besides, it probably would have been the latter. Unlike Psych, which had a stable audience of detective show fans to fall back on, Detour wasn't going to have that safety net. I mean, who was the show going to appeal to? College students? They're going to find it hard to relate to a 30-year-old rock star. 30-year-olds? They don't care about college sitcoms. Weezer fans? There's like four of us. I'm 